Hey guys, I'm Shubert, and I've been a FNAF fan since it came out when I was 12. I've been heavily involved in the community for the nine years since that, and have spent a lot of time watching theory videos. I've usually dismissed theories that rely too heavily on the books, with a few exceptions. This book is one of those exceptions. So, in this video, I plan to answer one main question. What is Dittophobia trying to tell us about FNAF 4 and the lore in general? I'm going to be going through many points, but I'll try to be as concise as possible. First things first, I'm going to quickly summarize the plot, then I'll go through the specific details that match up directly with the games and explore some possibilities. Next, I'll mention details that don't line up and try to explain them. Then I'll explore outlier details that we don't see in FNAF 4 or Sister Location and figure out what they mean. Quick Summary if you've already read the book or know its story, go to this timestamp. And if you'd like a more in-depth summary than what I can provide, watch this video. The book starts by introducing our main character, Rory, and then thoroughly describes the FNAF 4 bedroom and house. During the night, Rory is tortured by nightmares involving the nightmare animatronics and lives his days wandering around the empty house until he falls asleep and the nightmares begin again. The book goes on to describe the nightmare animatronics in near perfect detail, with the eye color being the main incorrect detail. Rory describes the animatronics as, quote, zombie-like versions of a fox, chick, and bunny, as well as much more I'll get into in the next chapter. Rory wakes up one day after having no nightmares and realizes the house is decrepit and he is a lot older. Eventually, after he explores this decaying house, he finds his fridge has a secret tunnel to the sister location bunker, and discovers that hallucinogenic gas has been causing his night terrors and to think he was a child for the ten years that passed. He wanders around the bunker for a while and eventually ends up back in the FNAF 4 house, and a tape begins playing that convinces him to turn the gas back on. That's the end. And if I left out anything, it is either unimportant to this video, or I will mention it in a later section. Details that match. To start, there are many details that line up perfectly with FNAF 4 and Sister Location. First off, the Nightmare animatronics are described nearly perfectly, except for their eyes, which are all white in the book, but that isn't accurate to the game. I think that this small detail is mostly unimportant because of how perfectly everything else is described. Foxy is described as the rotting ruin of a fox-shaped creature, with multiple rows of jagged teeth. Chica is described as, quote, a decayed version of a yellow chick, its body so riddled with holes that only the barest hints of a metal skeleton held it together. Bonnie and Freddy's descriptions are very similar to Foxy and Chica's, and I'll be leaving them out to not make this video too long. I'll throw some relevant quotes up on screen. Now on to the house. The book perfectly describes the FNAF 4 bedroom, toys, furniture, walls, layout, even down to the patterns on the quilt. It continues to describe the house, both places we see in the games as well as parts of the house we have never seen. An important note is that the room from the Between Night minigames and Sister Location is also perfectly described confirming that that room is in the FNAF 4 house. This is given even more credibility when we learn later in the book that this house is directly connected to the sister location bunker. Now here's some examples of spot-on details. I'm not going to go through every little detail, but I will highlight most of the important ones. The bedroom is described exactly like the FNAF 4 gameplay. Quote, Rory could take in the closet door opposite the foot of his bed, and his bedroom's two doorways, which faced each other from the left and right side of his bed. Another quote. His blue-gray furniture, a tall chest of drawers, which held a purple three-bladed fan and the lava lamp his uncle had given him. It goes on to describe the smaller dresser and a yellow porcelain lamp with a gray striped shade. The wallpaper, quote, only covered the top two-thirds or so of the walls and is lavender gray and white, with the lower third being gray and blue striped. He goes on to describe the toys in his room, quote, a blue telephone with large googly eyes and red wheels, and a green plastic fish, which I think is this thing, as well as a purple robot in front of the dresser. He then describes the quilt on his bed. It's all spot on. 
Now onto sister locations matching details. First, the living room has, quote, vertical stripes of bright blue and white above the rail, and under the rail, wider vertical stripes of beige and cream colors, even describing a couple paintings and two groupings of family photos, which might be these. This description matches perfectly with the between night living room and sister location, and again confirms that that room is within the FNAF 4 house. Now we'll move on to the descriptions of the bunker. With concrete floors and electrical lines and hoses everywhere, the way the entrance to the bunker is described sounds like a room that we would see in Sister Location, although it doesn't appear to be one we've seen in-game. It looks similar to Cam 6 in the private room in Sister Location, due to the gas canisters, but doesn't fit exactly, so I think that it is its own original room. Rory enters what he calls an observation station that is clearly circus control. Quote, it had slanted glass walls, a panel of unlit colored lights, one blue, one green, one pink, one yellow. He describes the baby poster, the gas tanks and fan below the windows. He describes Ballora standing on her stage, unmoving. He then enters the breaker room through Ballora's dance floor and describes it being filled with electrical lines in a big breaker box, clearly describing the exact one from sister location. Rory then finds a control room with two sides of slanted glass. The clown faces the fan, and the masks in that room are all described perfectly. He enters the elevator describing the circular room made of stainless steel with two posters, one of Baby and one of Ballora. He also describes the fan and the graded floor. All of these details are spot on. This is by no means every single detail that matches up, but I feel these are the most important to proving my point. Details that don't match. I've already mentioned the eyes, so I'll go on to my next point. On page 188, after Rory has entered the bunker, he comes across, quote, an animatronic pirate fox in the Funtime Auditorium that he says looks a lot like his nightmare fox, but less destroyed. This can't be Funtime Foxy, as they are not a pirate, and wouldn't look anything like Nightmare Foxy. My explanation for this is based on another section of the story. A little earlier, when Rory is exploring the bunker, he finds a room filled with extra animatronic parts. This could explain the robot fox, but it's hard to tell as this is all the information the book gives us. Quote, of course there were more animatronics. The repair room suggested there were many. This could also help explain another problem with the book, the appearance of Ballora. I personally believe that all of this has to happen after the gameplay of FNAF 4 and Sister Location for many reasons, but the appearance of Ballora threw me off initially. In my reread, I realized that Ballora could have been replaced or repaired with the extra parts, and since none of the other fun times are present, it seems likely. Outlier Details Now we'll go over some details that don't appear in 4 or Sister Location that also don't conflict with what appears in those games. Rory is initially describing his room, he says there was a, quote, rabbit stood straight up a few feet from the closet doors. I believe this is plush trap, but seeing as this is never mentioned again, I'm not going to think too hard about it. Rory describes the entire FNAF 4 house, including the living room, kitchen, bathroom, and even the back of the hall, all places we didn't see in FNAF 4. He also describes rooms in the sister location bunker we never see in game and an animatronic we likely haven't seen in-game, that being the, quote, pirate fox that Rory mentions on page 188. These details help to expand these locations' layout. The descriptions of Rory's room and the places we see in Sister Location are described in great detail, clearly drawing attention to them, especially since the unseen areas aren't described anywhere near as in-depth. Theories. After reading this book, I now believe that the crying child most likely never went through the FNAF 4 gameplay. It seems that the torture house was created for Mike as punishment for killing the bite victim. This explains the camera system in Sister Location's secret ending. The book has to take place after Sister Location for two main reasons. One, when Rory wakes up and sees the decrepit house, he sees how decayed the living room is and in the between-night cutscenes in Sister Location, 
we can see the room isn't as destroyed as Rory describes it. Two, the lack of the fun times. The only fun time Rory clearly mentions is Ballora, and the only other animatronic doesn't appear to be a fun time. This implies, along with the extra parts room, that Ballora could be repaired or replaced version, not the one we see in Sister Location. On page 203, referring to the tape convincing Rory to turn the gas back on, the book says, quote, The voice was low and smooth. It was calm and soothing. She can dance. She can sing. She's equipped with a built-in helium tank for inflating balloons right at her fingertips. It isn't clear exactly who is on the tape, but it seems, given the FNAF 4 house and its connection to the bunker, that the man on the tape is Afton. Now for the big one, timeline placement. Dittophobia confirms that both FNAF 4 and Sister Location happen after the bite victim dies, but we already knew that. On page 193, when talking on the radio to his friend Wade, he mentions that Rory's parents had a website to help find him soon after he disappeared. Technology in FNAF has always been inaccurate to real life, but maybe this still can tell us something. Assuming the internet was common around the same time as real life, he would have gone missing sometime in the 90s, meaning that sister location had to happen sometime before or in the 90s. In my opinion, this places sister location after FNAF 2 and around FNAF 1, although it could either be before or after FNAF 1. Since no one has a concrete answer about sister location's timeline placement, and the book doesn't give us much in the way of dates, it's hard to tell. So now I just have a simple question. Why would they go through all the effort of perfectly describing most things in FNAF 4 and Sister Location for no reason? The book describes things we see in-game with way more detail than the things we haven't. The details that don't match are heavily outweighed by the spot-on ones and have possible explanations as to why. I don't think they would put all those spot-on details in and draw attention to them if they meant nothing. I've always been conflicted about the books, and think for the most part they aren't useful for the game's lore, but this is definitely an exception. Overall, this book seems to confirm theories about FNAF 4 and Sister Location, and expand on those and locations. Although the best thing this book does is give more evidence to where Sister Location might be in the timeline. Anyway, that's all I have. I'm Shoop. Thanks for watching.